Hello and welcome back to another episode of Darwin Investors. Today I'm going to talk about how to grow a small account in 2022. Like when I got started in the stock market, it was it was pretty fun for me. I could just take a little bit of money and then you can invest it into like some some of these companies. Some a lot of them were SPACs, a lot of them were brand new IPOs. None of them were profitable. And you could take a little bit of money per, and money, and you could turn it into a lot of money in a hurry. I don't care if it was Palantir, I had CCIV, I had Bill Foley Trazamine, I had Star Peak Energy, or some of these things you'd find at like $12, $13, 14 And before you know it, they were. <laughs> some of these got up in the mid 40s, and in the case of CCIV, got, I think, in the low 60s. And you were able to turn a little bit of money into a lot of money in a very short amount of time. And unfortunately, those days are behind us. I can't wait for them to come back, but right now they're behind us. And so those the, buying these little stocks or me telling you what little stocks that I'd say you should go out and get is not exactly the way to grow a small account right here, right now. That's just not the market conditions that we're in. And so today I'm a lot more of a trader than I was back then. Now my account has grown, it's not huge, but it's, it's grown to a point where I can actually um, sell covered calls on large, um, not on shares that have, carry a pretty big uh, dollar amount. And then that requires you in a hundred of those. But um, if I was to start over right now and I was to, to try and grow a small account into a larger account, I'm, I would have to do through options and I would do it in such a way that um, it would cover a pretty advanced options account in order to in, in order to make these gains. So the purpose of this video today is kind of show you how I would go about uh, using an options account to grow a small account in the current market conditions that we have today. Now, um, who knows, maybe in six months things change and you can go back and buy small, uh, these little small unprofitable companies and make a lot of money. And that was kind of be the preferable way for me. I like to buy and hold and I'm still a long-term investor. But um, right now it seems like the way to go about, if you really want to grow a small account is to is to use options. And, and I'm not deterring anybody from like buying some um, profitable company that's very conservative and growing a little bit at a time. I'm just saying if you want to do it a little bit quicker, this is the way that I would go about it today. Now, if you look at um, the S&P 500 over the last six months, you can see it's like it's barely up. It's up in past six months. It's up 0.29 percent. And that's only because we had a wild day. You could see just yesterday. And other than that, we'd have been down on the S&P 500 in the past six months. The Dow Jones is down 1.02%. And the NASDAQ is down 6.82%. Now, I'm actually up about 12.83%. And you'll just have to take my word for it. But I'm up substantially over the S&P in the hundreds of percent, maybe even thousands of percent. And the reason why is because I have my shares and I'm able to make small little consistent gains off of these shares uh, in the form of covered calls. And sometimes I'll sell puts and I'll, let's face it, sometimes I'll just play an ordinary old gamble through earnings and just take my chances and see what happens on a company that I have a reason that, to believe that it might go up after earnings based on prior companies just like it through earnings uh, doing well, sort of like how Visa just had good uh, good earnings and MasterCard had good earnings. So that would make me believe that other retail stocks would probably do good. Or like Tractor Supply just had good earnings. So that would make me believe that Lowe's and Home Depot are also going to have good earnings. And so I'm able to predict based on past performance of other similar companies what's going to happen to future companies. And so I'm able to grow my account that way. And those are the ways that, I would, that I'm doing it now with a, a little bit larger account. But if I was to start with a really small account at this time, I would say that, that I would have to do it a different way. And so the number one way you're going to get money um, in your account when, when it's trading with a smaller account is to, is to basically you're going to have to add money to your account. Most of your gains are going to come from yourself. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that unfortunately is the truth. You're just going to have to put in your own money, and that's going to be the majority of your gains. And then with that money, you might be able to grow your account to at least 3000 and preferably $5,000. And then you can start trading options. 
And an options account is is very uh, critical to this to this well it is the central piece of of this uh, strategy. And right now I have a level one options account, but to do this strategy you're going to need a level three options account. And level three options account I think that they per, they make you have at least like say two thousand dollars so that you can have a margin account and a lot of companies will they'll say you need at least two thousand for a margin account so i say three thousand because you always want to make sure that your balance is up at least over two thousand dollars to keep your margin account and so with the level so these with with different levels of of um of options accounts you can get different privileges that the broker will allow you to do and in the case of Schwab and I'm, I think this is the same with all of them at level zero you can have covered call and cash secured puts and that sort of thing and then level one which is where I am now I'm allowed long calls and long puts and that was because I thought maybe at one time I wanted to do leaps and stuff like that but I don't really need to do leaps um, all of the stuff I do, I sell, and, and selling is something you want to get in and out of in a hurry. And, and, and cash secured puts often I'm out of within a day. Um, then you got level two options, which will allow you to do condor spreads, iron butterflies, iron condors, vertical spreads. Vertical spreads is what we're actually going to talk about today to some degree, um, but it's actually um, it's a vertical spread that's an uncovered option. That we're going to talk about today. Now, my own personal strategy, if you watch any of my Let's Play videos, is kind of more of a debit spread, um, where instead of buying a call that buying a long call, I'm actually bought the shares, which is the longest call of all. So it's a debit calendar or diagonal spread is what I do. And then you could also even consider like when you see me selling a put and selling a covered call at the same time, I'm doing an iron condor with no protection to the downside, except for the fact that I'm using really um, conservative types of stocks, the types that even if they go down, I would expect them to rebound. So they're inherently, uh, they're inherently protected to the downside, if I, provided I hold on to the shares for a long enough time. And so these are the types of things I do, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm going to be talking about uncovered options, which um, require a level three account in order to build a small account into a larger account. And I'm going to be doing the uncovered option in the form of a credit spread. And so the credit spread is essentially where you sell some, you sell an option at the money or basically at the price where the 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 option is current or the stock is currently trading at and that will give you what's called a delta of 50. now the delta of 50 means that it's your percent chance of winning the 50 means that you have a 50 percent chance the stock goes up and you have a 50 percent chance the stock goes down but it also means that for every dollar that the stock rises in price you get 50 dollars but you're not getting 50 dollars on one share it's an options account. That means you're getting $50 on 100 shares. And that's what makes this so attractive. And then the further in the money that, that you actually get with your stock, let's say that um, you're, you're trading a stock that trades at $50 and it gets up to $75 in your option and you have a call option and it eventually gets up to $70, you're, you're really in the money. And so at that point, your option starts behaving a lot like owning the real shares, even though you only um, actually own the rights for someone else to buy those shares, if that makes any sense. And so when you're gonna be trading this option strategy, risk management, I mean, risk management is the key. So for like, for the stock market, the stock market's an infinite game. It's not like a game of basketball or a game of volleyball or whatever. But your point is that you want to stay in the game. You don't want anything to run you out of the game. And the longer you can stay in the game, the longer you have to be able to make money. You, your point is it's like life or business. You really want to just stay in the game. That's the whole point. So you don't want to do anything to blow up your account and you don't want to do anything to run you out of the game. And so you want to be able to make these 
credit spreads in such a way that you've stopped, stacked the odds in your favor. Meaning that when you make this trade, you're going to get out of it with at least a little bit of money. It might just be a tiny bit, but, it, but at least you're getting out with something. And these small returns will eventually build into something larger. And the way we'll do this is that, is that you would do it by making a lot of little trades. And you don't want to do... And you don't want to risk any more than 5% in any single trade, although one of the op my favorite option from this particular video is going to show a little bit more. It's actually going to be 6%, so I'm going to bring my own rule right away. But ideally, you don't want to spend any more than 5% in a single trade. And, um, and you don't want to, say, do like more than just a, a couple trades or maybe three trades at a time because it's like, well, I, I didn't do any more than 5% in a single trade. Yeah, but you had, you know, 20 trades. That's 100%. <laughs> and so you blew up the whole account because let's say the market just uh, took a turn that you didn't really, didn't really plan for. So the way that you would do um, a, a credit spread is you sell an at-the-money call and then, or an at the money put, and then you buy an at the money call, or excuse me, an out of the money call, or an out of the money put. And when you're selling a call, it's actually a bearish move. Buying a, buying a call means you think the stock is gonna go up. Selling a call means you think the stock is gonna go down. And um, conversely, when you sell a put, you think the stock is going to go up. But when you buy a put as a hedge, say in one of your longs, you think the stock is going to go down. And so when you sell a put at the money, it gets more of a premium than buying a put further out of the money. So basically you're getting a net credit. And that's why it's called a credit spread. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this here in just a minute. So I don't want to lose anybody. So just so we understand, you're going to sell something at the money, and then you're going to buy something further out of the money. And the money that you collect is going to be more than the money that you pay, giving a net credit, meaning you suddenly have money. And again, like I said, one options contract is equal to 100 shares of the underlying uh, of the underlying company, and like selling a put, for instance, if you was going to like sell something, and and you said I will buy this shares if it falls less than say 190 dollars. Say it falls to 180, I still have to buy it for 190. I don't have to buy it. I have the option to still go ahead and do this. So you can buy your way out of these um, poor contracts. And for that, um, it's kind of an insurance policy. And it's also just less risky by nature. So options, by their very nature, are less risky. I know a lot of us think that options are more risky, but they're really not. They're a little bit less risky. So let's go ahead and come up and look at some examples that I come up with here for, for credit spreads. So I come up with a few here. I got Bank of America, I got Schlumberger, and I got Kulik and Sofa Industries. Bank of America, if you look at their chart here, we can see that it's closer to the bottom than it is to the top. If you were to draw a line here, you would say that the resistance is $49 and the support is $44. It's currently trading at $45. So in this case, since we're closer to the bottom, the logical direction that we would expect Bank of America to go in would be up. So we would want to sell a put, meaning that we don't think it's going to go down. We think it's going to go up. And we'll notice that also it trades in this in this area that's it's it's kind of like not a very volatile. We're looking between forty dollars here and forty nine dollars over the last 
oh, I don't know, nine months or so. And so it's not a particularly volatile stock. And so you want to do this on stocks that you have like, um, you, you believe it's got a very small uh, directional view. Like if, 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 if you believe the stock is going to go straight up in a straight line, don't do this strategy. But we don't believe that. We believe it's going to probably go up a little bit, but certainly, but probably not down. And the thing about uh, selling a put is that we will sell the put and we'll collect a certain premium. In this case, we believe it's going to be uh, under we're selling a put for $169 with a $45 strike that expires on March 18th. And I'll show you how I got these numbers in a second. I got them right off the, the website here. So if with a $45 sold put, if it finishes below $45, we would be on the hook to buy 100 shares of Bank of America at $45. So even if it finishes at $43, we would have to buy 100 shares at $45. That would make the contract basically worthless and to, to the person. But if, if Bank of America were to rise as we would expect it to, let's say $47, the contract finishes in the money. And so we get to keep all of our premium from this sold, from this sold put. And so what we want to do in making a credit spread is you sell one put, and in this case for, for Bank of America with a $45 strike, it's $169. And then you sell one out of the money, you buy one out of the money for less. And that gives you a, a max profit of $86 and a max loss of $214. The, the options have what's called intrinsic and extrinsic value. So the difference between the strikes is $3, which means at expiration, the real internal price of this stock is $3 a share or $300 for a hundred share. So the, the max profit that we have and the max loss are going to add up to $3. So let's go in here to the Schwab account. Let me just show you what I mean here. We'll go ahead and trade Bank of America. And so let's see, Bank of America. And we'll trade um, a put and we'll have it expire on March 18th for $45. And right now that's $170 spread. So right there was 169. So it's changed a little bit over the last hour or so. And then the $42 strike that I'm gonna buy if I was to buy it, it, is going to be $83. And it's still $83. And so in the case of right now, the max profit we'd have is 87 and the max loss would be $2.13. Or $2 and so sold put means that, again, finishes below 44, I have to buy it. But you cap your loss, your losses, because you've bought protection to the downside by buying the put meaning if it finishes below 42 both options are going to start trading down at the same at the same way so your max profit is $86 and your max loss is 214 because you bought a hedge against it and this is called a credit spread meaning that you took you you sold this you bought that and so your your Profit is the difference between those two, like basically the, the difference between what you bought versus what you sold. And the difference between those two is a 28% spread, which means that if you win twice in these things and you lose once, you're going to be behind. So this would be an example of something I probably wouldn't want to do. Your break even, if, if, this, if Bank of America were to fall to $44.14, They've already given you $86. So if it falls to $44.14, you're now breaking even from $45, right? $0.86, $0.86 cents minus uh, $45 is $44.14.
And so this would be, to me, kind of an unfavorable trade and probably one that I'd steer away from. One good thing about it is that in order to for your max loss, and let's say you were starting with a $5,000 account, you're only going to use 4.28% of all your money. So that's not too bad. Bank of America, you would win this 160, or excuse me, the $86 total. If Bank of America were to finish at 45, you win. If it finishes a little bit over 45, you win. If it finishes way above 45, you win. If it finishes a little bit below 45 and does not break 4414, you win. And that's what makes this such a a powerful tool to grow a account, a small account into a large account. But ideally, you want to you want to be able to win if you lose if you lose if you win twice and lose once, you still want to be ahead. Ideally, that's what you want. And so if you look at Schlumberger here, now this one here would actually be a call. This would be a call spread. So this is one that we think that this one will go actually up. And so the reason why I chose up is if you look at Schellenberger's stock, now this one's near the top of the list, right? So we would expect if Schellenberger is going to go in either direction, and now it's an oil thing and the oil stocks have been hot, but even then we believe if it's going to either go up, further up or down, probably down, revert to the mean, is probably the way that we would think. For this, we would sell a covered call on this. We think that Basically, remember I said a covered call is actually a bearish hedge. So you would actually believe it's going to go down. And so you find one at the money and then you start betting against it. You, you buy another call just in case it keeps going up. You say you, you're protecting your upside here, but you believe it's going to stop here and it's just going to trade downwards. In which case, uh, you're going to keep all of your premium from Schlumberger. Schlumberger uh, has an 18 March expiration, a $40 strike, and then the, the farther out of the money call that we're going to buy would be $42.50. So the 40 strike covered call will pay us $233. And then we will have to buy another uh, call for $137, giving us a max profit of $96 a break even of 4096 and a max loss of 154. This whole trade only costs you 3% of your of your entire portfolio, which is not bad, and it only and it, and it only makes up 38% of the total spread. So now if you win twice and lose once, you're still ahead. That's where you want to be is right here. You want to be able to win twice, lose once, and be ahead. So you want to look for these kind of uh, these kind of stocks, and we'll get into how to find these in just a second, uh, a little bit later. But these are the ones you want to get into. And and my favorite of the day is actually this Kulik and Sofa Industries, which is um, same expiration. This one would be another sold put. Let me see if I can bring that up here. Uh, this would be another sold put. Click. And if you look at this one here, over the course of six months, we're definitely near the bottom. This is this is why I like this one so much. And I've used this stock to make quite a bit of money, and it's a fantastic company. And you can see it gets as low as $51, $49. It's it's like pretty much near the bottom. I love this stock for this for this purpose. And in Kulik and Sofa Industries, if we pop it in there, we'll get a $50 strike that'll pay us. We'll sell the put for $3.80. We'll buy a put for $1.90 at $45. Now you can see it hasn't been at $45 this, this in a really long, has it been there? Okay, it, it was there a little bit, almost a year ago it was there. And so we don't expect it to fall below that, but it's also rare for it to go below $50. Now um, you sell the put for $380, you buy the put for 190. This protects your downside in case it keeps on going down. Your max, your spread is five dollars, and that would be the intrinsic value between 45 and 50. Um, your max profit is a dollar 90, so it's 380 minus a dollar 90. Your max loss would be the difference between a dollar 90 and five dollars, which is three dollars and ten cents. Gives you another 38 percent spread. The break-even is $48.10, which is $50 minus $1.90. Uh, 
And so the only downside I can see this is it takes up 6.2% of your portfolio in the case of a max loss. And so we, like I said, we don't really want to go over much over four or five percent, but we, you know, we have to be realistic. And so, to grow the small account and sell these covered calls, we, you have to select cheaper, cheaper stocks if you're going to be starting with a slower, with a, a lower dollar amount. And you want to use um, stocks that aren't particularly volatile, stocks that are really steady, stocks that grow at a pretty consistent rate, uh, decent stocks uh, that, but they're not going to be wild stocks. They're not going to, they're not going to just like shoot up in a straight line. These are ones that we believe have a very small to medium directional bias. Now there are ones that you can use for, if you believe it's going to be a big jump up, but we're going to be using a whole different uh, spread option. If that's the case, you're going to be using more of a debit spread than a credit spread. If you, it, or even a naked call, if, if you're really going to, or a naked put, if you're going to, um, really take your chances so but for this particular strategy to grow the small account in a conservative way and not blow up your account i suggest that if you're going to do this sort of thing use a credit spread with very um, conservative types of stocks and one way that you can look up what kind of stocks that you would want to buy you would use uh the fin uh finviz is a i love this, this is a free stock screener and what I do is that, like for something like this, I would go to Screener. We're going to look under Fundamental Analysis. We're going to look for price to earnings ratios that are under 25. Now, this is the way I would do it. Forward price to earnings ratios would be under 20. Peg ratios under 1. So right now, this, this right away says this is a pretty good value stock, one that's probably not going to be too wild. Uh, uh, it's not going to be one that's going to grow, you know. It's not going to be one that's going to blow, that's going to like grow crazy. That you're going to want to sell debit spreads on. It's going to have an earnings per share growth of the past five years of ten percent, earnings per share growth of the next ten year of five years of ten percent, and sales growth of the past five years of over five percent. And when and so then you run this thing and you get you get like several pages of these and it looks like there's eighty here, and and. And some of these look really good. Like um, you got right here, you got uh, one of these good ones here. You got Dr. Horton. You want to stick to stick to stocks that you maybe heard of or you've had a good experience with. Um, a couple of these that I've worked with that I like. There's Icor Holdings, this is semiconductor equipment, and here's Kulik and Sofa KLIC, the one that we just discussed. It's a Singapore uh, semiconductor company. Like basically, uh, when you're going to build um, semiconductors, you need the materials, you need the machinery in order to do it. And these are the people that provide that to you. So does same with Icor Holdings. So this, so using um, uh, using Finviz, you can kind of get an idea. You put in the metrics that you want and get, kind of get an idea of the type of stock that you want to be able to trade. Uh, trade these these credit spreads on now to get out of your trade now this is the money ball this is the reason why it's not that why it's less of a risk than other things so to get out of your trade you sell it once you've made 50 percent of your max profit you're out and if you lose 100 percent of your max profit you're out meaning that in the case of let me bring up this spreadsheet here in the case of Kulik and Sofa, if you make $80, cash out. If you lose $190, cash out. And that means that you've lost nothing from this credit spread, provided you can cash out. Some of these will let you do stop losses on your options. I think some brokers, not Schwab, but the, if I was going to do uh, this sort of trading strategy, the brokerages I would probably use are maybe Thinkorswim by TD Ameritrade, probably be a really good one, or maybe Webull um, has, I don't know if they have stop losses. I know TD Ameritrade does, but Webull has a lot of the the delta, you know, they give you the, the Greeks. And that, that'll be for another video. I'll talk about those later, but they'll be able to give you the Greeks, the delta, gamma, theta, vega, and all that sort of thing. And they at least give you that much. But I think that Thinkorswim is probably the best for doing this kind of strategy here. Um, so for me, I think one of the, the, the take-home messages from this are that you're going to want to stay conservative with your account. And 
you just don't want to blow it up. You know, with your trades, don't use any more than say five or six percent on any trade. And optimally, you'd be doing a little bit less than that, obviously. But you know, we gotta be realistic. If you're gonna be starting with a smaller account, some of these things are just gonna cost a little bit more than four or five percent. And that would be the way that I would grow a small account. Um, would be using credit spreads. If I was going to do it today in 2022, things might be a little bit different in the future. But for now, that's the way that I would go ahead and grow the account. Now, listen, if you got anything out of this video, please like and subscribe. Maybe hit that little notification bell. And until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.